What is up, you freaking geniuses? All right, so in this video, this is going to be like part one of three of like a little mini series. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to add and subtract positive and negative fractions with the same denominator. I'm going to do proper and improper fraction examples. And then in the next video, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it with fractions that have different denominators. Okay. And then in the third video, I'm going to cover the same thing, but with mixed fractions or mixed numbers, whatever you want to call them. All right. So let's get into it. Okay. So if I give you one over two plus one over two, right? One half plus one half. How do we do this? Okay. Adding numbers with the same denominator is very easy. Okay. Cause you always keep the same denominator. All right. So we're going to put a two right there in the denominator. So what do you do at the top? You just add straight across that way. Okay. So what's one plus one, two. Can we simplify this? Our answer is two over two. Can we simplify this? Yes. Cause remember fractions are just division problems, right? So what's two divided by two? Well, that's just one. Okay. So one half plus one half is equal to one, which makes sense, right? Cause again, if I had a pi, and I cut it into two pieces, right? So I have half of the pie here and half of the pie here, right? Half of the pie there, half the pie there. When we combine them, it makes one whole pie, right? Which is why we get one. All right, so let's do another quick example. What if I had three over 13 plus five over 13? Well, again, you're going to keep the denominator, okay? So we can automatically just put that there. They both have 13, so we're just going to put 13 right there. So then what's 3 plus 5? Well, that's just 8. Is this as reduced as possible? Yes. 8 over 13. All right, so not too bad. Now, what if you had improper fractions? Okay, so for example, if you had 15 over 8 plus a proper fraction, 4 over 8. Okay, well, nothing changes. Okay, as long as you have the same denominator, here we're just adding. Okay, so you just add straight across. So we have the same denominator. We can automatically put 8 there. 15 plus 4 is just 19. Can we reduce this? No. Okay, same thing. What if they were both improper fractions? It does not change anything. If we have the same denominator, that's all we need. Okay, so we'll Put that there, four plus five is nine. Can we reduce this? Yeah, because the top and bottom are both divisible by three, right? We can divide by three here, divide by three here, and this reduces to three over one. Okay, and can we reduce this anymore? Well, sure, whenever we have a denominator in the bottom, we can just hide it, right? Because this is the same thing as, so this is equal to three divided by one. And what's three divided by one? Well, that's just three. We could have done the same thing right here, okay? Because remember, fractions are just division problems. So what's nine divided by three? Well, that's just three, right? Which is the same thing right there. So four, so four thirds plus five thirds is equal to three. All right guys, so as you can tell, adding fractions, whether they're proper or improper fractions, they're pretty simple to add when they have the same denominator. Okay, so now let's get into subtracting. So I'm gonna redo the first example, but this time I'm gonna subtract. Okay, so if I had one half minus one half, what would this be? Okay, so again, we have the same denominator, so we keep it, and then this time we're just doing one minus one, and that is zero. Okay, can we reduce this? Sure, because zero divided by two, well, that's just zero. All right, so I'm gonna give you three quick little rules when you have a zero in your fraction. All right, so three rules of zeros. All right, so your first one is gonna be when you have a zero in the numerator and you have any number in the denominator, this is gonna equal zero. Okay, so if you have zero over a million, zero over negative a million, it doesn't matter. Zero over any number is equal to zero. Now here is your second rule, okay? If you have any number in the numerator and a zero in the denominator, this is equal to something that we call undefined, okay? And 
I won't get too far into this, but undefined basically just means it's not allowed. You can't divide by zero. So if you have a zero in the denominator, it's undefined, okay? And your very last rule is gonna be, what about when we have zero over zero? Hmm, okay, so in this case, again, it's gonna be undefined because we can't divide by zero. That's a big no-no. Okay, so make sure you write these three rules down or memorize them because they're gonna be really helpful whenever you have a zero in your fraction. Okay, so let's do another example. What if I gave you five over 18 minus three over 18? Okay, same thing, same denominators. So we're gonna keep them. Then we do five minus three on top, which is just two. Can we reduce this? Yes, because two goes into two and 18 evenly, right? So this just gets reduced to one over nine. Now, what if I flipped the fractions, okay? What if I had three over 18 minus five over 18? Okay, well again, so we have 18 on the bottom. So we're gonna keep 18. And then what's three minus five? Three minus five is negative two, right? So this is equal to negative two over 18. So can we reduce this? Yes, because two goes into two and 18 evenly, right? So it's the same exact thing that we had up here. The only difference is we're gonna have this negative sign right here, this negative sign. Okay, so instead of positive one ninth, we're gonna have negative one ninth. So if you need a review on how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers, I'll link that in the card up above just in case you need it. But I'm gonna do a bunch of examples here, so hopefully it'll start making sense anyways. Okay, so let's do another one. What if I had negative four over seven minus nine over seven? So again, I have the same denominator, so I'm gonna keep it. So what's negative four minus nine? Negative four minus nine is negative 13, okay? And this is as reduced as possible. Okay, so just a quick little reminder of a rule, right? So if I have a positive four and a positive nine, that's gonna give me a positive 13. If I have a minus four and a minus nine, that's gonna give me a negative 13. So that's all we're doing right here, right? So we got a minus, we got a minus, so we got a minus. Okay, so let's switch this up a little bit. What if we had, what if we had negative four sevenths minus negative nine sevenths? Okay, so I'm basically adding an extra negative right there, okay? Okay, well, if you remember, whenever we subtract a negative, okay, so we're subtracting a negative, that turns into a plus. Okay, so I could rewrite this. Okay, I'll move it over here. I could rewrite this as negative four sevenths plus nine sevenths, right? We basically just make this one big plus sign. All right, so now let's do this problem. Negative four sevenths plus nine sevenths. Well, again, we have the same denominator. So what's negative four plus nine? That's positive five. Okay, and that's as reduced as possible. All right guys, so I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments section below. That way I can try and help you out and clarify those. But other than that, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to add and subtract fractions with different denominators. Okay, so if you need to check that out, definitely check that out and I will see you there.